From the government sector, I have three pleading asks. If you have a handle with care program, such like it exists in Maryland, Mecklenburg County, um, in a Charlotte area, and that you already have the mechanisms in place to identify potentially traumatized children and getting them the help and support that they need clinically, that you start to look at uh, shot spotter data and start to integrate it into uh, your already existing systems. And so we can automate the process of notifying the schools of when children may have been potentially exposed to gun violence by sharing the information about where it happened with the schools. The schools on their end cross-referencing that information to which children live in and around that area and now we're preparing to do assessments, treatments, or just handling them with care as the model suggests, keeping a closer watch and eye if any symptoms develop immediately or long term. The next thing to really look at is things like the child development, community policing program, handle with care programs, and community health worker program from a public health standpoint. So if we know which blocks the gunfire is most likely to happen on, isn't that a great place for you to send your community health workers to ensure that particularly the young adults who may be at highest risk for actually getting shot and shooting have primary care providers to make sure that they have the medical care and treatment that they need? Looking at it more broadly, for re-entry again. Uh, if we know somebody has a diagnosed mental health issue, uh, that may put them at higher likelihood uh, for involvement in violence or being more easily triggered uh, by gunfire. We want to ensure that the people who are returning from jails and prisons um, have the supports that they need, both in medication uh, and case management and transition support. Putting them back in an environment, again, with a known mental health illness, uh, knowing that they may not have access to primary care um, to continue that medication usage is setting not only them up for failure, but causing a public health, you know, crises. And so again, using the data to prioritize um, your re-entry efforts, uh, your uh, identification of those who may be at higher risk due to known mental health diagnoses and other physical disabilities. Recent gunfire victims returning back to hot blocks uh, should be thought about in a different way from a governmental standpoint and how we support those families uh, and make decisions um, upon release from the hospital where it may be best appropriate. And, and we may not always be able to do that. Uh, most times the most uh, families who are at the greatest risk uh, have the least amount of resources and at least ability to move around to different safe locations. We can at least make sure that we provide them with community violence intervention, outreach engagement, community health work engagement, clergy engagement. It's going to take all of us to utilize this data uh, to mobilize and deploy the resources and supports that are needed for a very small number of individuals and families who need the help the most. But that small number of families relative to the greater population oftentimes um, have the least access to services and supports that have been shown what we call protective factors in public health. They have the least access to a high number of protective factors and higher risk factors. And so what we want to do is address those risk factors in those specific areas to reduce you know, the likelihood that they are further injured, re-injured again.